All right, everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche. Uh, today we are going to get into some of the All Star Weekend festivities and the Kale McCarr and uh, Nazem Kadri, kind of like the events they're taking part in. And then we're going to give some grades. We're going to start with the defensive players and goalies. So we'll hand out some grades at the halfway point of the season. But I mentioned those uh, events that they're taking part in, and, and Nazem Kadri. It's going to be doing an interesting one, something to do with gambling. And you're, you're not a gambling person. Like you don't gamble a lot or you don't go to casinos a lot, I should say. Or do you? No, I just I know when to hold them and know when to fold them. I oh, know okay. when to walk away, <laughs> so, know when to run. So you are more of the Kenny Rogers and I am more of the Austin Powers. <laughs> Danger's my middle name. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Locked On Avalanche Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. And uh, before we get into anything, follow the show on social media outlets, LOPN underscore Avalanche on Twitter, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram, questions, comments, concerns, opinions to Locked On Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow the show on our YouTube channel over on the YouTube. Just hit subscribe and get notified whenever a new show goes live. So some fun things to get to today. It's All-Star Weekend, so we will be discussing the events taking place. Not all of them, just the ones that Avalanche players are taking part in. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll get into some grades. We'll grade the defensive players and the goalies, and then we'll do the forwards uh, early next week, likely on Monday. <laughs> so uh, let's start with the the All Star festivities. And you know, if you listen to to this enough in the past couple of weeks, you know I'm not a big fan of All Star weekends. I think they're just a waste of time. <laughs> uh, I'm not trying to be like a Debbie Downer or anything like that. I just I'd, I'd rather regular games. It's the most wonderful time of the year, Chris. Come on, no, get on the bandwagon. Not. It's really not. I can't stand it. Um, I get like the fun of it, and and these these things like are kind of fun. But I don't. Hockey players are not like. I was talking to my buddy about this the other day. He's a big Ranger fan, and I think it was. I think he said it was Chris Kreider who came. He was listening to some uh, radio, uh, sports radio, sports talk radio. And they had Chris Kreider on. He goes, and within two minutes, I shut it off mm. because they're just so like monotone. You can you you know what they're going to say before they say it. They just give the yeah. hockey answers. It's just boring radio. It is. And then yeah. when you get them together, they're not like these. I mean, they are like these fun loving guys. But when it's like a structured thing for for like 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 what we're going to talk about, it just seems to just not be as exciting as it should be. Yeah, uh, like I rem like back in early Nathan McKinnon days, you remember those commercials that him and Sid used to do together, and like their little bits they would do in the off season of like be working in a drive through, and like even though it yeah. was like funny and humorous, they're still so monotone, and it's just like they can't exist in our world. <laughs> well, it's like you know when, when they're when they're on their own and they're just having fun in their own way in just like their natural habitat. Like that is where you get the best like sound bites and video clips. <clears throat> when you have these structured things for them, they just, it's like uncomfortable. They just feel yeah. like they're uncomfortable doing this. Like they have to put on a show when they'd rather just go out and play their game. I get but, it. But then you get a personality like PK Subban and they put you yeah. on everything. <laughs> Absolutely. And he has one. So yeah. I get why they're always putting him out there because he's comfortable doing that. Yeah. Um, but for the majority of hockey players, they're just not. They're just not yeah. built that way. So, um, but you know, th these things sometimes are are fun to watch, and they mm -hmm. are because they're in Vegas. They're doing some different things. You're getting your regular hardest slap shot and and uh, the speed competition, which Kale McCarr is taking part in that for the fastest skater. He is up against Chris Kreider, Adrian Kempe. Kyle Connor, uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov, Jordan Cairo, Dylan Larkin, and of course, Connor McDavid, mm -hmm. uh, who seems to be the favorite going into this year in and year out. But I say, 
every year he's in it, he's another year older, which maybe he's a little, uh, maybe maybe a step slower. And he didn't That's win right. it last, uh, well, not last year, two years ago. He didn't win it a couple years ago. No. I think it was Matt Dylan Barzell. Larkin. Oh, that's was, right. It was Barzil and then Larkin. Barzil. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Did Larkin win it? Larkin did win it one year? Yes. It, I think really? it was the year before the Barzil. I think it was because that was my first look. time seeing Dylan Larkin. And I was like, this kid is fast. I'd have to go look at because I just thought McDavid has been the winner for the last handful. Of, maybe there was a year he didn't take part. That's how much I don't care because <laughs> I don't really. <laughs> and, and and like to to jump on that point, like I said, like that's the first time I noticed Dylan Larkin. This is the same thing for all 31 other fan bases that really don't get the chance to see Kale McCarr. That's yeah, why that's these true. stand out a little bit because you hear about them, but then you see him in fastest skater. You're like, oh. I'm gonna have to yeah. keep an eye on that kid. Yeah, um, I was so looking forward to it, like Nathan McKinnon doing mm. it. Maybe he would have done it this year, but the first year that he did do it, that was the year before that he he did it two years ago, and then three years ago is the year when he kind of got hurt and then he was coaching. Yeah, I, I'm just always looking forward to him doing it, going head to head with Connor McDavid, and then he eventually did it. And maybe it was just like the first year he was doing it, he didn't perform all that well. Um, so I was kind of looking forward to him to do it. But the interesting thing is, and McKinnon did this, he went, he, he did it with a stick. You don't have to, mm -hmm. but he did it with a stick, more comfortable that way. Yeah. Um, and he went, I don't, I, I think he went like counterclockwise when most guys go clockwise, depending on which way you're looking at the ice, obviously. But I get, he went the opposite direction that everybody else was going in while holding a stick and everybody went the other direction, like not holding a stick. So maybe that held him back then. I, You're saying I Nathan McKinnon doesn't think like us normal human beings. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. Um, so what do you think the chances are here for uh, our good buddy, Cal McCarr? Has he got a good shot at this? Is it going to be first year, not really knowing what to expect or, you know, how much to push himself and, and his competition? What, what do you think is uh, his biggest competition is? Well, with names like Kreider and Kyle Connor, Del Larkin, Connor McDavid, they're experienced in this regard. Like they know the fastest skater. Um, we know what Kale can do. So I know if it was like a foot race or like a like you know one on one, he would beat anybody. But in this style format, we will see. He's got a good chance, but he's going up against people who have also been in this competition for a while. Yeah, I think you always have to give the the favorite to McDavid. Um, I saw something somewhere where it was like they had the speeds for all of these guys. And, and I don't know if it was like their fastest speed that they've clocked at, at any given point during the year. And McDavid was tied with Makar. It was like 24.1 mile an hour. Um, I don't remember who's number one on that list, but um, they were whoever it was, was not much further up than that. Um, but I think this, this should be good. I don't really watch the capitals a lot, so I don't know too much about, uh, I mean, I know who Kuznetsov, Kuznetsov is, but mm -hmm. I don't know about his speed. I do know about Kreider's speed. He definitely has yeah. it. Kairou has speed. He might be the dark horse here. Yeah. This one is Jordan Kairou. He, he's uh, a, a little fast guy. Watch out for him. It's going to be, it's going to be one of the highlights. Like if it's one of those, you don't know which competition to watch, especially with that group. Give that one a look. For me, it's 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 like my favorite one, and then after that, I don't really care. like the this the hardest shot. It doesn't matter anymore, like because you're all. It's not like anybody is is ten miles an hour above the record anymore, you know. So yeah. I don't know. I just don't get excited. But the the fastest skater one I do. Uh, a new one that they're throwing in because it's in Vegas is they're calling it twenty one in twenty two. I, I think it's kind of a dumb name, but um, <laughs> the the, the idea behind it is there's going to be from my perspective it's going to be big giant cards like playing cards like card sharks and yeah and then these guys are going to be flinging pucks at the cards trying to get blackjack or as close to blackjack as possible i guess it's kind of fun in theory i just want to see it play out uh but nazem kadri is going to be involved in this and he's going up against austin matthews Brady Kachuk, Joe Pavelski, and Steven Stamkos. So uh, some, I mean, this is all about accuracy, obviously. Um, and when you're doing that, again, just like McDavid is going to be the favorite in the, the speed demon one. 
I think you have to go Austin Matthews here. Yeah. Um, and but you never know. I mean, I I think not many people. Nobody's been been expecting much out of Kadri all year. So maybe he's going to surprise you in this one as well. This might be my favorite competition if they all skate out there in like dusters and cowboy hats, especially like Austin Matthews and yeah. Kadri with that look. That'd be next level, but. We'll have to see what this looks like in execution. I have a sneaky feeling it's going to be cool in concept. And then about three three skaters in, they're like, okay, we got to change this up just a little bit. Oh, I just want to know, like, is there a dealer? Like, you have to go up against somebody. You're going up against just the other guys? You go up against a, a hypothetical dealer? Gary you know. Bettman. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Well, then, you know, it's fixed and he has blackjack off, off the rip. So, uh, but I want to know that stuff because you, you know, when you're playing blackjack, it's like, well, the dealer has to stay on 17. When you have 17, do you hit? Yeah. Like myself, I mean, like I said, I am Austin Powers. So I always hit on 17. <laughs> no, I don't always do that. Uh, but I, it's, I want to see how this, this comes about. Interesting yeah. in theory. Let's see what, how they uh, uh, produce it. So, and then uh, the game is the game, and that'll be whatever it is. So, interesting <laughs> things, kind of throwing new things out there, new wrinkles. And if it's fun, I will say it's fun. I, I won't, I won't, I won't sugarcoat it just because I don't really think it's going to be much. Uh, yeah. I'll be the opposite of that. It's automatically going to be fun, and they're going to have to really try and make it not fun for me. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, as we look forward to that, let's hear from Built Bar and then to get into some grades. But Built Bar is here for you and your New Year's resolutions. If yours was about getting fit or eating healthier, you can make Built Bar part of that plan. It's a protein bar that tastes more like a candy bar, probably even better than a candy bar. You want to know what I tried today? And, I, and, I'm, and I'm not a candy bar. Today. I'm genuinely not. But somebody told me there's like Reese's peanut butter cups with potato chips in them. Yes, I've heard about those. And I'm like, all right, I got to take a bite of one. And I was like, that, that is interesting. But in that like one bite, I probably had like 30 grams of sugar. So I was like, <laughs> uh, this is this is this is going against my built bar, uh, you know, ad read. So uh, if you want to stay away from the peanut butter cup with potato chips in them. Go to Built Bar. Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. They have 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 grams of net carbs, 17 grams of protein. Compared to the candy bar or that half a Reese's cup that I have that have around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. So go to Built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off of your order. Once again, that promo code is LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Halfway through the year, so we will do some grades, and we figured we would start with defense, and I always like doing these mid midterm and then kind of like seeing how the rest of the year goes, mm -hmm. and seeing if they held that grade. Did the grade hold firm? Did it get better? Did it get worse? So this is kind of like our midterms right now, Yeah, and um, we'll start with the defense, and I think we'll just go alphabetical. Uh, and we're not going to do like we're not going to do uh, Bo Byram, uh, obviously, Justin Barron, who played the one game. We're not going to do even Jacob McDonald. We're going to skip and we probably won't even do Ryan Murray, um, kind of guys that have played the meat of the the schedule so far. So alphabetically, first one would be Sam Girard. What would you give Sam Girard so far this year? Uh, Sam Girard. It's a good thing. This is a midterm starting out. It was kind of shaky. Kind of wonky. Um, he started to pull it around. I honestly, let's give Sam Gerard a flat C. Yeah, I would maybe bump him up a little bit more, give him a, a C plus. Um, I, it's not like he's he's not having a bad year, but he's not having a standout year. And if you yeah. remember last year, about halfway through the year. Uh, it was, I think it was on the score, which is a, a Yahoo sports owned, um, sports page had him as the favorite for mm -hmm. the Norris at, and they were deep into the season. He was playing a, a spectacular season and I'm not going to hold him to that metric. I don't think anybody yeah. was really expecting that, but he kind of does disappear at times. Um, you know, I mean, I think he's still, he is a solid defenseman, 
Um, and I don't even think it's, you know, t- Kale McCarr taking anything away from him, but no, um, I do. I think, I think he does need to step it up a little bit more. He was even kind of, his name was getting thrown out there for trades and stuff like that, which I never agreed with. I wouldn't trade. Yeah. The guy. No, no. Uh, and I mean, he's only got 26 points so far and it's you, and how you many, know, how many games, but it's the... 42. Okay. Yeah. You'd like to see a little bit more. I don't expect him to be a point per player defenseman, but uh, maybe a few more there. I he's agree. almost almost a defensive Burkowski. Like you know what he's capable of, and you can only do La Tornade so many times before yeah. you're like, okay, <laughs> you do something else. <laughs> yeah, I hear, you. I hear you. So yeah, you see for you, C plus for me. Uh, Eric Johnson. Mm, I would have given him honestly. I would have given him like a B plus, but I'm honestly after his. Goonery. <laughs> that's sticking with you, right? <laughs> that's that's really like veteran leader on that defensive. Like you cannot do that. So that dropped him all the way down to a B minus. Honestly, flirting with a C. Like his production's there. He's doing the right things, but that goonery, I cannot. I don't think I could live with that. And he's really got to make up for that. Yeah, that was uh, kind of boneheaded. But I, I don't want to just put so much emphasis on that. But I would agree with you. I think he's he's in the B minus range. I mean, he's got 15 points on the season, and he is not a scorer. No, you know what I mean. Like he is out there for his defense and to shut the other guys down. Uh, he's five goals, ten assists. He's a plus 17 on the season too. So I think he's playing very well, especially for his age, coming off of an injury. Um, I like what Eric Johnson is doing so far this year. You don't want to see what he did, obviously, against Boston, but. Um, I, I'm I'm in agreement with you. I think a B minus is good for him. Yeah, and he's there was many instances that he saved games for us, which yeah. he could have got such a higher grade. What about the other Jack or the other Johnson, as in Jack? Oh, JJ, oh old man Johnson's boy. Yeah, um, he is a solid C plus. Honestly, like not anything incredible. Um, start of the season our first goal but other than that i think he is you know what they expect out of eric johnson and just like a solid mm-hmm. defenseman don't worry about the scoring part of it i think he's kind of taken that role um because because he only has seven points on the season a goal which was the first goal of the season for mm-hmm. the Avalanche, which was mm-hmm. a, a Connor mcdavid-esque move um and a plus seven on the year I think you got to give him a B for he has tailed off a little bit recently. Um, and the term that you, you, you like to use a lot of the, the shine has worn off yes. a little bit on him. Um, but I think you got to give him credit for, for making this team on a tryout basis. Yeah. Nobody thought he was going to be as, uh, as, as an important role as he is taking as he has been. So, um, yeah, I give him, you know, for, for the bulk of the, the first half of the season, he's done well. He's held his own. He's that defensive guy. Um, and that's what he's there for. So, yeah, I give him a solid B myself. But he I is al- slipping a little bit. I want to see him improve for the second I half. almost went B, um, but his he's been getting a little sloppy with his passes and turning it over. Right. I, th- so. I agree. I agree. I, 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 I want to give him a B because, like I said, of making the team, how he started yeah. the year. But he's slipping a little bit as as we're going along. Along, so you want to see him kind of get back mm-hmm. to that uh, beginning stages. We're gonna put Curtis McDermott in here with the defensive players, even though I know he does play forward sometimes. Uh, this will be an interesting one. What do you got for for McD? Honestly, a S- McD is a solid D. Um, a D for him? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I would have, he would have rode like an F all year long, but you see he's trying to like improve. Yeah. So where he is right now, what you're getting out of him is a D by the end of the yeah. year. You mentioned what will these grades look like? He might work himself up to a C. Yeah. I think, man, like, and I've been critical of him a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, And it's so much it, like with, with Jack Johnson, how we're, I'm kind of weighing it towards the beginning of the year. We've been playing very very well and how he's kind of slipping a little bit. It's the opposite for McDermott. Mm -hmm. The beginning of his season was horrific and he's starting to play a little bit better now. So Mm -hmm. 
You know what? I think I'll agree. I'll give him a D right now because he doesn't play a lot either. Yeah. He's playing five, six, seven minutes. But on the, I'll, I'll give him a D plus. How about that? We'll give him a D plus. And I think if he keeps trending in the right direction, he could finish, you know, C's get degrees. Yeah. Uh, and, and he could, he could easily have a C by the end of the year because he, he, I'm seeing improvement from him, which I like. And he is their muscle right now. Mm-hmm. He is their muscle. So hovering D, D plus C minus. But because his the beginning of the season was was just so bad for him, I, yeah. I don't think you can overlook that. No. Um, who we got next? All right, the one and only Kale McCarr. I mean, A plus. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, I don't, I don't really think we need to spend a lot of time on this. It's A plus. Uh, if you don't believe us, watch the uh, All Star Game festivities tonight. There you go. Yeah, I mean, he he is a a freak of nature. And um, just one of those guys that you're happy to have on on your team. So mm-hmm. and he can do it offensively and he can do it defensively. He is not a, a flashy defenseman that doesn't know how to play D. He'll knock you on your butt. So mm-hmm. uh, I think that's an easy A plus from both of us. And uh, the last one on the D, Devon Taves, same thing. A flat. A flat, yeah. Why, why, not, why not the plus for Mr. Taves? Um. Because he doesn't want to be an A plus. Ooh, what do you mean by that, Sir Shaggy? He is he is completely fine not being on a highlight, not being anywhere. He doesn't want to be known yeah. as A plus talent. Kale McCarr, he's he's the shining star. Mm-hmm. Devin Tays gets in there, lunch pail, gets to work, gets out, punches the clock, goes home. He doesn't All want right. to be A plus, so right. flat A. All right. I'm still giving him an A plus. Like I said the other day, this is his coming out party. He that this is could this, the way he's playing, and then if he can continue this um, for years yet to come, um, it could be known as Joe Sakic's best move that he's probably ever made. yeah. Um, so yeah, I think he he's we've said it many times about him. He's just uh, that calm, cool, collected defenseman who is just right place, right time, rarely makes a mistake. Positioning is excellent. And I think uh, we have a dynamic duo on the top pairing, and it's it's both those guys. So A-plus for, for Taves for me. All right, let's get to Bet Online and then some goalies. So Bet Online has you covered this season. More props, odds, and lines than ever before as we have our Super Bowl right around the corner. And the big game is a uh, week and two days away, right? Yeah, yep. right around the corner. So betonline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news for whatever season you choose to follow. It's not just football. BetOnline has up-to-the-minute info on pro college, uh, pro and college hoops, the NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live real-time updates and current games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for the 2022 seasons, go to betonline.net. It's where the game starts. All right, goalie situation. Uh, you know, tale of two seasons in half a season for the goalies because it's it's been a wild ride for them. Maybe it's starting to smooth out. We've seen much improvement over the past month, especially with uh, Pavel Francos coming back. And we'll start with him. Um, these are the only two we're going to do. We're not going to get into, you know, the guys that are no longer here and Jonas Johansson. Why would we do that? And then the, you know, the guys that came up for a game or so from the HL, this is the, the, the Darcy Kemper and, uh, Pavel Francois show. And we'll start with Francois, even though he hasn't played a ton, but you know, he's, but since he come back, he's been good. Yeah. And it's funny that you say it's like the tale of two goalies, like, with two opposite origin stories coming into this year, one who's tried so hard to join the avalanche and one that was trying so hard to get out of Arizona. And now they have both (laughs) landed here and Frankie, it was, we've talked about it numerous times. You had no idea what you were getting from Frankie. If he could make Mm -hmm. it through a game, what's his health look like. And he started in Loveland with the Eagles and looked incredible. And you're like, well, that's nice. He's doing really good. He and did. Then, he did look good 
with the Eagles, except for the first game. Like he didn't yeah. look good. And I think a lot of people were thinking like, oh no, Francois doesn't have it. And it's like, no, like that's his first game back coming back mm-hmm. of yet another injury, which is still like even that injury that he had this year just prolonged how long he's, he has not played. Mm-hmm. So that first game back, forget about it. And people were kind of like questioning, uh oh. And then, yeah, he had another couple games there where he was shutting teams out in the AHL, which he should be doing. And a lot of people just take for granted the fact like the goalie game is a mental game. There is no bad shift, skate it off, redeem yourself. If you let one in, everybody is on your case. And you're, that's all you're thinking about. While everybody's going to take a, another goal, you're sitting there thinking about the one you let in. So for all that time that Frankie's been off, for him not to get the Rick and Kiel yips and <laughs> get in there and do what he's supposed to do, and not just do it in the AHL, but under the bright lights of the NHL and go dueling shutouts with the prohibited starter goalie right now. Yeah. That that speaks a lot. Yeah. I mean, he's only played eight games so far. So we're only going off the past like, you know, month plus a little bit. But he's seven and one. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's seven and one. He's got uh, 2.29 goals against. A point nine two seven save percentage and two shutouts. So small sample size, but what would you give him so far? Honestly, and this is it's on the razor's edge, and I've been thinking about it. This is a B plus performance. This is a B yeah. plus. I, I I I just I can't go that high just because you know he hasn't played so much, um, but. It's so tough because, like, he's played exceptionally well in the game, yeah. few games that he's played. If he had some games where it was like, yeah, up and down, up and like whatever, uh, may, maybe you could kind of rate it a little bit more. But I gotta go. I'm, I'm like going. I mean, it's not a big deal. I'm going between B minus and a B. Yeah. So, uh, but this will be an interesting one. Like how yeah. we're saying, how it goes to the end of the year. How will the rest of the season look like for Francois? And if I'm giving him a B minus B, you know, let's extrapolate that out to the end of the year. And he could be he could be in the A. Let's hope not. He goes down and go into the C range. We don't want that. But uh, I think just for the small sample size, I got to downgrade him to at least like a, a B minus. But because the, the few games he has played are so good. He's yeah. So I, good. It, that if you just look at stat line in that small sample size, you could easily get away with saying, Oh, that's an A, A plus. But sure, if, if you watch and you know his story and what he's gone through and what he's doing, like Jordan Bennington still getting paid because of just looking at a stat line in a hot hand. So you don't want into that trap. So he's he's in that B range, and I can't wait for him to prove us wrong. And we don't have enough pluses to hang on the A at the end yeah. of the year, but. Right. Yeah, you gotta you gotta be careful with that. And then uh, Darcy Kemper, uh, we know the story and how he got to Colorado. Uh, Avs gave up a pretty decent mint to get him, uh, but struggled a little bit early on. Seems to be getting the hang of things recently. So you have to take all of that into consideration. What's your grade for Mister Darcy? I'm giving him an A minus. Mm. Um. Okay. J- just an A minus. Um, I wouldn't want to give him the same grade I'm giving him Francois. Um, does not seem fair. Um, I would not go higher because early in the season it was a circus with his equipment and yeah. Yeah. for him to like how quickly we forget with that winning streak that Darcy could not keep his equipment together. Yeah. So like you kind of wonder about that, but he finally got everything together and he's putting up shutouts and bailing us out of games and being the only shining spot in a lot of our games, but you don't want to go too high because it started out so weird and rough and you don't want to go back into that. So you're kind of hesitant about that. And that's why like, it's so weird. You look at his stats, he's 21 and five, Mm -hmm. 20 and two overtime losses. So 21 and five, uh, 2.55 goals against a 0.915 save percentage. It was a, and he, it was, it was a struggle early on. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, you got to take that into consideration. And again, 
He is a guy who recently seems to start like he's starting to get comfortable. Mm-hmm. And I think having Franco's back only elevated his play. So man, again, I think I have to give him like a B minus right now. I yeah. don't think I think like he was so up and down. He wasn't that guy that was when when the the defense was struggling and they needed big saves, he wasn't giving it to them early. Yeah. He's starting to do that. So I he, he I feel like him and Franco's are in the same boat. Franco's for different reasons because he didn't played so much, but for for Kemper it's more of you know, because he is playing so much, because he is playing so much, he could increase his grade by the end of the year and be in that B plus A minus range for me. And he is, he's only been there for 44 games. He's one of my favorite players on the team because yeah. how we were saying early, how, how, uh, you know, hockey players are so monotone and they don't have really like any energy. He does. And that's part of the reason why I like him in interviews. He just seems like he's a fun loving guy. That's part of the appeal to him for me. Uh, so I, I do, and I'll say, I, I kind of do hope they keep him around. I yeah. kind of want him back next year. Uh, and, and another year comfortable in Denver with this team. I think he's only just going to keep progressing and you'll see it this year. But for a group. Yeah, absolutely. And one, one point, one point that I didn't make when I was talking about the two goalies, the reason, the reason they're so close together, Franco's gets that B plus because of how he handles overtime and shootouts. Darcy Kemper it's that A minus because how he handles overtime and shootouts. So they're right there. If we could have the flip of how they handle overtime and shootouts, yeah. they would be going two different directions. Yeah, that's a very good point. You can't forget about uh, Pablo Francos being the greatest goalie in NHL history when it comes to shootouts. Yeah. <laughs> Say that with, uh, with a smirk. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's what we got so far. And then on uh, Monday, we'll do the the uh, forwards. But what do you guys think? I'm sure we'll get some comments in, uh, on the YouTube side of things anyway, because the people over there are active and they like to comment on, on their personal feelings for grades. But we want to hear them. Defense and goaltenders, what are your grades for our team so far? And then we'll get to the forwards on Monday. But that will wrap it up for us today and for this week. Thank you, everybody, for making this your first listen of the day. That is always appreciated. Go check out Locked On NHL for your second listen of the day. Uh, Get caught up in everything going on around the league. We also have a special Locked On NHL Olympic uh, hockey, especially, you know, following the women's games and the men's games, obviously. But uh, those are extra episodes for the Locked On NHL side of things. So good stuff happening over there. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Another week of shows in the books, and we'll start it up all again on Monday. So he is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli, and this is the Locked On Avalanche podcast. Enjoy the All-Star game as much as you can. We'll see you Monday.